So, yeah, my name is Sterling Perrin. I'm a senior analyst with Heavy Reading. And uh, we are looking at this panel at software defined networking for optical networks. Panelists, I'll go from closest to me uh, across. We're joined by Chris Liu. He's uh, vice president of network strategy with Infinera. Next to him, we have Greg Nehib. He is uh, senior manager of product and solutions marketing with Cisco Systems. We are hearing a, a lot of pushback against <coughs> open, open flow right now and a lot of interest in things right now like NetComp and, and Yang, and I'm trying to sort out myself whether those are competitive things or, or um, is everyone going to tell me they're all complementary? Uh, the Cisco views on open flow versus uh, other alternatives and, and where you guys are placing your bets. Sure. We've seen uh, more interest recently in NetConf Yang and service provider space. Uh, that obviously triggered some of the investment. But, you know, as Dave said, uh, you can have open flow objects in uh, an open daylight controller. You can have Net NetConf Yang objects in a an open flow controller. So there's already overlap between the protocols, and then I'll go ahead and throw another one out there, uh, PSEP for path computation. That's going to become increasingly important. So it's not a one protocol fits all environment by any stretch. And it's okay for the industry if it's not? Or, do, I mean, do we really need to rally around one particular standard, or can we have a bunch of them? Is too many standards causing a problem for folks like Glenn? I think with the abstractions that we see, these protocols are a lot simpler than, you know, TL1 with commas and semicolons. <laughs> so we, we've got a lot of room, I think, as software developers to really take advantage of multiples. This is, we've heard a lot of different definitions of what SDN is, and it means different things to different people. But if we use it just for provisioning, I think in the next one to two years, we don't really see a lot of multi-layer, multi-vendor purpose there. I mean, there's not a lot of business driver. But in the longer term, if we use SDN toward the efforts of... Uh, of WAN optimization, so multi-layer WAN optimization in particular, I think that's when we, you know, the rubber meets the road in terms of, uh, you know, layer eight, the money layer that we heard in the, the presentation this morning, and that's going to drive a lot more adoption. And there are, um, you know, hasn't really been talked about on, on this panel, but there are a lot of things going on at the IP layer, so IPv6, uh, policy-based routing, segment routing, that are drastically simplifying the routing space. Um, making SDN, not just NFV, which we understand the, the attraction there, but making SDN more attractive because it'll actually be able to provision, um, you know, packet flows from source to destination in a simple fashion. And so when you marry that to what's already been discussed, uh, you know, Chris went into some detail on the transport space, you know, we'll have flexibility at both layers and then I think WAN optimization becomes a reality. All right, Chris. All right. Uh, Greg, I think you're the sole IP routing, at least as a company represent, uh, representative. If you want to hit on um, the GMPLS or other distributed control planes, and then including uh, maybe impacts of IP routing. I think that um, some of this just boils down to message flow. So if it's simpler to, to discover multi-layer network information with a protocol like GMPLS or MPLS or pick your protocol, then it makes sense to me that it, since those are already standardized that you would use those just for speed and efficiency. So I, I think there's room for multiple definitions. Okay, so yeah, I mean, there's, I guess there's two things going on. One, there's definitions of what is SDN and what isn't, and then the second one is do these things have any relevance in an SDN world? Um, I think they, they would have relevance in an SDN world because that's another way to get the information that you need right. fast. Right, right. So they, they are relevant, and then we can debate whether you should call something distributed. It seems to me like it's headed towards no if it's distributed. I think it's likely that we would see providers, you know, say, uh, we don't really like GMPLS, why don't you do it another way? And so you would probably need to have multiple solutions, but, you know, you're not going to make uh, an open flow call down to thousands of network elements right. and expect a really rapid response where you can discover the state of all the routers and all the switches and all the DWDM networks, right. network devices. Right, That's right. going to take forever. So many of you guys, although many of it, it doesn't get announced that often, but many of you supply into the, the, the Internet companies, the Web 2.0 companies. Um, do you get different feedback, I'm curious, from them? Um, or is there a push towards, you know, sort of a commodity optics um, and common set of, you know, just standard, uh, I don't know, not quite COTS, but... Um, or are they fairly on page with the, the telcos on, on this one? Um, 
you don't have to name specific suppliers, but uh, operators, but I know you guys, several of you do sell into those markets. Well, it, it comes down to cost. And so, you know, while they may buy tens of thousands of the same thing, um, you know, for a data center upgrade, they still, you know, have the same measuring stick. So it's got to be the best solution at the best cost. And you still have to go through, you know, all the, uh, all the steps of uh, setting the gain control and, you know, all the things that happen in the optical supervisory channel, so I don't really see that changing. Okay. Yeah, so back office integration challenges for the others on the, the panel, is it is it coming up in your discussions and have your companies kind of tackled this in, in any way? I mean, look, looking at it more from the packet perspective, you've got a lot of the same issues. So with V4, we had, um, you know, diff multiple AS boundaries to get uh, a packet flow from source to destination because we ran out of addressing space. And so with IPv6, we actually have policy information in the header now. So policy-based decisions are gonna figure into this as well, not just at the transport layer, as, as Dave described, but also uh, through the IP packet flows as well. So I think, you know, we, we have a problem to solve across the board and it's probably gonna be, you know, be a long-term migration type solution. So the question with SDN, does it, um, does it change the meaning of IP and optical integration? Does it help, hinder, or um, kind of what's the, the, the future trajectory? Does it uh, speed things up a bit? It, it's been, um, I guess, 14 years, and we haven't quite, some of those 2000 NFOEC um, technical papers probably still haven't been achieved yet. Um, anybody want to kick this off? I'll, I'll let the suppliers kind of give their views. Uh, Greg, I know, uh, you know IP over DWDM certainly has been a big Cisco topic. Yeah, so I'll give it a shot. Um, I'm mean, really in the spirit of the last question too. Uh, one of the one of the service providers that uses Telcordia that I spoke with about a year ago said that much to their surprise, there were 39 methods and procedures they had to follow whenever a, a router a port turnup triggered a DWDM um, network growth. So, you know, those types of situations probably can't go on a lot longer. I mean, especially as we move to 100 gig. A lot of these, um, you know, processes need to change to achieve any efficiency goals at all. But um, I mean, just keep in mind that most of the services that we heard, uh, you know, the speakers and the uh, keynotes, most of the services are based on IP. It's going to be really hard to optimize the network looking at it one layer at a time. So you got to actually um, abstract all this information up to a centralized controller that can make some smart choices about how to optimize the network because you're going to have different triggers at different layers you know where the ip layer may be sensitive to latency and jitter the uh you know the optical impairments are totally different animals so i think that over time this is going to gain in importance um time is the question though i mean is it going to be a year five years uh who knows that's that's the bigger question i think all right, uh, Greg, I don't know, he sort of opened it. Maybe I'll give you the final, final word if you're not. He kind of took a, took a knock at physical integration. Um, I don't know if you want to. Well, I think, you know, physical integration, the tendency is to think of a coherent DWDM interface on a router blade that's capable of forwarding IP packets. That's not really the way that I look at it. Um, I, I think that those technologies are still on different life cycles. So you could actually... Um, you know, look at managing them as separate devices, especially if you have a graceful controller, like in the case of SDN, and you're able to abstract enough information to make really intelligent decisions. Um, there's probably some benefit to having a common management scheme where basically you could spoof that into looking like one network element, but I don't think there's any problem at all in having that as separate shelves, one being focused on the optical life cycle and the other being focused on more of the network processor and memory life cycle. Okay, good, good clarification. All right, on that, unfortunately, we are completely out of time. I want to thank our panelists for their great insights, and thanks for your questions and attendance.